Democracy Day uh, to be with us here um, to take uh, to give evidence to the committee. Um, Mr. Tompkins made um, reference to the transition period. Just, I wonder if you could help me understand this as a point of clarification. Is it still UK government policy and within this deal that the transition period should come to an end at the end of 2020? Yes. Okay, so in that sense, you envisage that there will be a comprehensive free trade agreement with the European Union um, negotiated and ratified in a little over 12 months' time? Yes. That's the UK government's position? Absolutely. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Now, there was some discussion about um, a differentiated arrangement between, for Scotland, for Northern Ireland. I'd like just to bring this back to, to very simple language. I know my constituents, and particularly businesses within my constituency, Renfrewshire South, will appreciate. So just a very simple question, Mr Gove. Will Northern Irish businesses have easier access to the European single market than businesses in the rest of the United Kingdom? <laughs> Yes. They will do. Do yes. you think this puts businesses within Scotland and indeed in England and Wales at a competitive disadvantage to businesses in Northern Ireland? No, it need not. It's not. Why would it need not? There are, uh, if we secure the free trade agreement that we are looking to secure, then it should be the case that there will be uh, no uh, quotas, no tariffs, no quantitative restrictions, uh, no additional friction. Uh, and that would allow businesses in uh, Scotland, Wales and England to have full access to the EU market. Uh, but it is, of course, the case that in Northern Ireland there are specific factors um, which pertain, which mean that uh, we want to ensure that there is no need for infrastructure at or near the border. Um, and that requirement, which was, um, as Professor Tompkins pointed out, something that um, uh, uh, my friend Mike Russell uh, insisted on, we, we have ensured that this deal delivers on that. Very much appreciate the delicacy and the sensitivities of Northern Ireland. My question more pertains to what the economic impact would be for businesses in Scotland. Now, in your remarks just there, you used two qualifying words, should and if. This is contingent upon a deal being negotiated by the end of next year, which, if you forgive me, I'm sceptical, as I know many people are, can actually be achieved, given the normal duration that these uh, deals take. So, so what assurances can you give for businesses in Scotland if that deal is not negotiated by the end of next year, that they will not be put at a disadvantage? We will be doing everything we can as a UK government, and I, I hope with the help of colleagues in the Scottish Parliament and the Scottish Government, to ensure that we get a good free trade agreement. It's emphatically in the interests of both the EU and the UK, and it's also been the case during the period that we've been negotiating the withdrawal agreement and the political declaration, that progress has been made in mutual understanding in a variety of areas, like uh, a satisfactory level playing field, which should mean that these negotiations can be concluded very quickly. My final point is just to bring it back to a question that the convener raised in his opening line of questioning. A clear majority of people in Scotland voted to remain within the European Union. It is the only part of the United Kingdom where that result has not ultimately been recognised. And you have conceded, as your colleague Dominic Rabb conceded, when he said that this deal is a cracking deal for Northern Irish businesses because they stay part of the UK customs territory, but they've got seamless access to the EU single market. You're conceding that this deal could, and may very well, and it's perhaps likely, to put businesses in Scotland, to put businesses in my constituency at a competitive disadvantage do you think that's fair? Well, I think uh, businesses in your own constituency and across Scotland will be at a competitive advantage um, when we secure a free trade agreement. Um, and uh, one of the things that would put businesses in Scotland at a competitive disadvantage would be if um, Scotland were to separate from the United Kingdom um, and that we were to have um, uh, uh, new strains, new tensions and new friction in that economic, social and cultural and political relationship. Well, I thank you for answering my questions, but I don't think businesses in my constituency will be reassured by that at all. Uh, Mr Gove to Alec Rowley.